Okay, following up in our series of our acoustic emission experiments, this is a recorded of an uh, experiment that we have conducted and we use a PCT transducer to excite an acoustic uh, signal on an aluminum cantilever plate. So let me show you a little bit of the setup. So as you see down here is the aluminum cantilever plate and we can make it, for example, if we need to make it vibrate, you see that it vibrates. The reason that speaker is there is sometimes we excite it with low frequency, you know, uh, vibrations produced from a speaker that, that can give uh, signals pretty much from DC all the way to about 10, 20, actually we have been able to pick up signals all the way to 90 kilohertz with that speaker. And that's the cantilever plate. What you see here is the connections for the fiber graduating sensor, and if I magnify, you see that we have sensors distributed along the plate, various locations, okay? Now what we have done in this particular experiment, and it's just to try to compare the signal from a PCT transducer and the signal from the fiber break gratings and make sure that they're kind of comparable. So what we're doing, and this is a control experiment, so what we're doing right here, if you see in this particular position, what we have there, we have a one centimeter uh, PCT transducer. The transducer actually looks like this. Let me go to my box and see if I find one. Um, let's see, not that one. Yeah, so the actual transducer that is mounted on that plate is something that looks like this. It's a one centimeter square transducer. So we have this transducer and it's actually not permanently attached to the plate, but it's clamped with a, with a clamp. So we do a little bit of contact. Um, and what we have now is, um, so you see the wires of the PCT transducer. And we bring this transducer and we have a signal generator that we use to excite a variety of frequencies uh, to excite the transducer. And we can go pretty much with this generator anywhere between 50 kilohertz all the way to 500 kilohertz. The reason that we stop at 500 kilohertz is because the amplifier in our optical system has a limit to the 500 kilohertz uh, bandwidth. Uh, okay, so what we do is we have this one centimeter transducer, which is a PCT transducer, and we use that to excite acoustic signals in this cantilever plate that we use, you know, it can be vibrated and all this. It can also be strained if we want to. The complete of the strain of this, of this plate is about plus minus 3,000 microstrains. And simultaneously, so we had the fiber break release on the plate, and we also have an acoustic emission transducer that we're using to pick up the acoustic emission signal, okay? So the goal of this experiment was to compare the signal that is detected by an acoustic emission transducer versus the signal that is detected by the fiber aggregating sensors using a reference acoustic ultrasound transducer, the PCT transducer. Okay, so that's the sensing part. In terms of the optical demodulation part of the fiber aggregating sensor, in this case, again, we have our integrated optic for a refracted chip. And hopefully I can expand a little bit into the chip, but that's kind of the chip. The chip is mounted on a sub mount, which is a brass sub mount, and it has various components. I probably will give you a, uh, um, a picture of the chip. And let's see if I can use uh, maybe this thing to show you a little bit of the, of the elements. It's a glass chip that you see here in the bottom. Attached to the glass chip, that little silicon-like thing is the indium phosphate photorefractive crystal. In front of that crystal, there is a photodetector. On the other side of the chip, here on this side, there is another photodetector. You see it right there. So we all have one photodetector there, another photodetector here, the indium phosphate chip there. And the chip has an input fiber pigtail, an output fiber pigtail. The detectors are wired to a miniature electronics board. And that electronics board is actually right now connected. See my camera readjust. It's connected via this wire to these BNC connectors. And actually one of the limitations that we have right now in our system is this wire and these wires that are connected to these BNC connectors. This external wire that comes out from the BNC here, and eventually the wire gets fit into this trans impedance amplifier. So one of the biggest sources of noise that we have in the system is all the electrical wiring that is connecting the detectors to the trans impedance amplifier. And that creates you know, a big source of noise for us. 
Anyway, with the trans impedance amplifier, it's disconnected to the oscilloscope, and with the oscilloscope, we're able to, to compare the traces of the signals. We also have a data acquisition system that we're trying to set up, that is our proprietary, is our uh, fast sense data acquisition system, and it's in, in the progress of being developed, and we, we're still having some problems with this, and we're debugging it. Hopefully, we can get it to run, you know, by some of the experiments that are coming. Anyway, so what we're going to do in this particular test, what we're going to do right now, and actually I can show you uh, the, what we're doing. So right now, basically, we're going to start by turning off the transducer. So we have no transducer signal. We're going to come here, our setup, and look at the, our experimental setup. Here, what it says is the frequency. We run it at 500 kilohertz. Um, the signals, it has a rep rate of about 100 hertz. Uh, we have a voltage to run the PCT, which is about 0.9 volts. And um, these are, we wrote the, the PCT, we run it on a red cycle. So right now, the number of cycles is eight cycles per burst, burst and the burst width is about 16 microseconds. Okay, so that's the experimental conditions of our PCT. Here, what we have in our screen of the scope right now is three signals. The yellow trace on the top is the signal produced by the signal generator. The green signal, which is the noisiest one that you see here, is the signal produced by our optical system, is the fiber bright gradient sensor signal. And the blue signal is the signal of the acoustic emission reference transducer. So right now, everything is passive. The system is not running. But the time domain we're focused right now, our scale is at 50 microseconds per division which is gonna allow us to see these 500 kilohertz uh, signals, okay? So, what we're gonna do right now, is go ahead and activate the PCT transducer. We go ahead and activate it, okay? If we pay attention to the transducer, you hear a little noise. This is actually the 100 hertz bit noise of the transducer, okay? And that's the experimental setup. So now we come and observe our signals. Again, what I'm gonna do, so we can do it in real time, I'm going to turn off the, the transducer. Let me see if I can position the camera at the same time. So we can see the evolution of the same that's happening in real time. And now I'm going to come here and I turn off the transducer, and you see the signals appear. Okay? Again, the yellow line shows the burst line of the signals. And right now I have the scale compacted. So you see right there, that's our burst. And then the blue and the green signals are the signals detected by the, uh, uh, both the fiber bright gradient sensors through the photorefracted chip and the uh, PCT transducer. So that's kind of what we see. We can see that some of the bits of the PCT transducer and the fiber bright gradient sensor are comparable. Like you can see right there, they occur pretty much in the same position. There is a slight delay in the position of some of the bits between the two. But overall, the signatures are kind of comparable. Um, if I expand the scale a little bit, so if I can do this, move the trace, so we get to see it get closer to the burst. So now we see a little bit of, of the burst. So right now, now I expanded the scale. You see what I was talking again? Let me get my pointer. This is our burst. It's actually A cycles, as I was mentioning. And this is a slight delay between the bursts. You see the same delay on the PCT. So this part here corresponds to this part here in the bright gradient sensor. This part here corresponds to this part here in the, uh, in the fiber bright gradient sensor. So there is a slight delay between the PCT transducer and the position of the fiber bright gradient sensor. And that may be actually be related to the position of the three transducers in the system. So right now, this is our actuator right here. This is our fiber bright gradient here, and this is our PCT transducer here, which are, you know, they're spaced by about a centimeter or something like that. Anyway, so that's the signal. Um, that's, that's how it looks. Uh, if we look at the frequency, basically, if we look at the frequency of one of these oscillations, it's at 500 kilohertz. That basically matches the frequency of the active, uh, of the, of the uh, transducer that is activating the acoustic sounds within the cantilever plate. One thing that we can also look at, take a look is, is um, if we take and vibrate the plate right now, for example, we give it a strong vibration to the plate. We see that you know it has no real influence in the signature, 
the signatures remain there, so it doesn't affect our signature condition. And if I can do it again, you see, I'm vibrating the plate and nothing happens to the signal. So the signal remains there. Um, so basically what this shows is that we can detect high frequency acoustic signatures with the fiber bright gratings, also in the presence of, you know, varying strain and other things like that. So for example, if I come now and apply like a 3000 micro strain onto the plate and come back and see uh, my signal, you see that our signal is still present there, just as before, okay? So that is that. Uh, other things that we can do is we can change the frequency of the event. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Um, see how that goes. So I'm gonna go from 0 0.5, 500 kilohertz. I'm gonna drop down to 400. So now you should see that the signals kind of change. Uh, okay. And the other thing I need to do is I change the frequency. I gotta change the voltage here a little bit. Anyway, but we should see our signatures basically getting comparable there. Again, if we decrease our scale, we should be able to see similar types of events occur. There it goes. You know, uh, pretty much the same type conditioning, similar type of events. The fiber we are getting sensor also detects similar signatures. And uh, that's how it is. We can go all the way to, for example, 100. Right now, this is 400 kilohertz. I'm going to go to 100. Okay. And you see the evolution of the signals that this happened. Now, what you see now is that the signals are spread more, so we're going to compress this a little bit. Move it. So we're positioning the time rate. And then again, we can see that, you know, we're picking up both the high frequency events and some of the beating of the PCT clusters. I mean, the key parameter is to compare the signature of the PCT versus the signature of the fiber break rating to see that those signatures carry similar uh, uh, parameters. Okay? Let's find that a little bit so you can see. There you go. Okay, that concludes this demonstration.